नमस्कार एज वी प्रोमिस्ड वी आर बैक विथ स्टार दरबार वंस अगेन दिस इज अ दरबार फॉर द स्टार एंड यू हैव बिन सींग अस फॉर क्वाइट अ लॉन्ग टाइम दैट वी आर ट्राइंग टू ब्रिंग योर फेवरेट पर्सनैलिटीज tonight we are celebrating women yes this is the month to celebrate the shakti the energy for the whole universe and that's the reason our guest is very special tonight she is a dancer she is an actor and who else what not let us find out and let's welcome our favorite dancer from bengal Tanushree Shankar, Namaskar, Namaste, and welcome to Star Darbar. Namaskar, Namaskar. It's wonderful to be here, and thank you for inviting me on this platform. Absolutely, we are overwhelmed to see you because you know you are such a fantastic dancer and actor. We want to start with your dance and how you started. So, what was the reason, like you started dance? Uh, it was crazy because I don't come from a dancer's family at all. I come from a doctor and a lawyer's family. My father was a doctor and. it just happened that i never had any interest in becoming a doctor so but i always loved um, you know dance music theater and it was great of my parents to sort of encourage um, you know me in that field so when my dad he was in the army he was a doctor in the army so when he got his posting in uh, you know calcutta he got me admitted in the uday shankar india culture center which was the dance institution of uday shankar and avala shankar and that's how my journey started and i was passionately in love with dance honestly because i couldn't think of any other thing to do you know i was so 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 much in love with dance and uh, that, that during that time my uh, you know journey of learning dance started because prior to that it was just you know coming together and just dancing you know as it is in army life you know somebody would teach and during durga puja you do a dance during holi you do a dance you know but there was nothing you know formal training but the formal training started when uh, i came to calcutta and got admitted in this institution so that's how it all started and over a period of time uh, i started performing with um, you know the group and uh, then i met anando and uh, then we courted and got married and then dance became my life mm-hmm. and i'm there's no regrets about it at all what was your experience with uh, uh, anando shankar what what was that experience please share with my viewers his first album in america in los angeles and uh, that was the first album which was uh, called the world music this was in 1969 for the warner brothers reprise so he he was more of a musician composer uh, he never danced he just was born in this family of dancers so he had a very sharp understanding and i for quality dance quality work and uh, so it was the combination of his music and my choreography was really uh, very unique i would say because we understood each other very uh, well so it was really the he always teased that i'm the only husband who can say that my wife dances to my tune oh that that's a that is a good one and you know uh, we we saw you in uh, different like the reality shows that you were going in so uh, you also represent a lot of folk dances you know indian folk dances so do you ever think that uh, there should be a reality show only with the classical dances or the folk dances absolutely you know i have i have done a uh, judging for a reality show when it reality show wasn't this big 
Mm. It was for a Bengali channel who were very, very, uh, you know, I think very innovative and uh, who started this uh, reality show. That that time there was only one other show which was uh, like it was called Boogie Woogie, uh, and there was no other uh, reality show. But now, you know, uh, what I feel, you know, that in the name of reality show, we have completely uh, pushed aside our roots, whether it's the classical dance form, whether it's the fabulous, rich, traditional folk culture that we have from all over the country, or even the uh, new innovative, modern style of dance, which is the Uday Shankar style, which is very, very Indian, but very modern in its thought, in its presentation. But we have completely pushed all these aside and we have been only doing what the West does. For me, I think it was very important in, if any of the reality show uh, groups would take one, you know, maybe one day where it would be only the Indian traditional folk dance, or one day where the dancers are challenged with any of the classical dance forms. You know, only then they will have the interest of learning as well. So, but yeah, that's, uh, it is, well, I don't know, it's a transit transition kind of a thing period, I would say, because uh, lately I have been seeing a little more interest coming into the younger generation for the classical dance form. Mm -hmm. But the folk, I hope it gets more prominence and more uh, platform to show what beautiful folk dances we have. We, uh, uh, I mean, uh, since we are like talking about this, you are also a teacher, right? So you teach dance as well. So is there any changes that you were looking in your students as well that what type of dance they want to do more like as they're learning from you? But since there is a big uh, agenda these days that we have to go on stage very fast, we have to uh, do the Bollywood dancing, all these things. So this is like more like a parent's thinking as well these days. It is not only what a child is thinking. So how about that? Who are coming to you as a student if, if there is any changes you are looking at? In the first place, I will say uh, every child is like a, you know, he or she is like a clay. Is the parents who become a little more ambitious. And uh, the patience, we need patience to first learn, which is not there nowadays. But in my institution, uh, there is one thing which I tell all the parents, that you have to be patient for the child to learn. Because a child doesn't go into a kindergarten school and come out as a graduate the next day. It takes about 10, 12 years for the child to reach that graduation period. So if you can give that time to the child to grow, learn, develop in education, that same mentality has to be there for learning any art form. It can't be overnight. You cannot think of a child going into a school and start performing the next day. But unfortunately, you know, today uh, people are learning more through YouTube than learning from uh, gurus, you know, and with patience that, okay, I will have to uh, dedicate a certain few years to first learn. And then of course, that learning will sustain you through the next few years when you're performing, when you're creating, when you're choreographing, all that will happen when you do this. So unfortunately the learning patience for uh, children are very, very short these days. But in my institution, I always tell parents that you have to be patient. Uh, if you want your child to come into my school, uh, Give the child some time to grow. Give the child, let the child be spontaneous and not 
force the child to become an adult at an early stage. So for me, I think it's very important to learn, be patient, and more to the parents, I would like to say that let them, let them learn, take, let them first take in a sponge and only then they will be able to give back. And another thing what I feel is unfortunately today, children are doing a lot of fabulous, the fa some outstanding dancers. They're born, you know, there's so much of talent, but they are being taught to songs which are very adult. It doesn't gel with them. I mean, today, if we start as an adult, if we do two pigtails, wear a short frock and, you know, behave like a three-year-old, it will be a misfit. The same thing goes for the child. She becomes a misfit when she's doing that. So the child has to be childlike. And that is what I feel is very important. And today's, unfortunately, dance has become more like a, gymnastic and circus, uh, especially I'm talking about the Indian version, uh, then aesthetics and the lyrical and the grace and the beauty, which is very, very much of an Indian, uh, you know, vocabulary, the kind, whether you do a Bharatanatyam, whether you do a Odissi, whether you do a Kuchipuri, whether you do a Manipuri, or whether you dance on Rabindu Shangit. You know, it has its beautiful, uh, moments, it has its beautiful grace, it has a different kind of a look, which I sometimes miss. Uh, so I think it's important for us to hold on to that and be progressive and be progressive. I'm very open to modern and contemporary. I, I do a lot of collaborative work. I do a lot of uh, international workshops and uh, just that is more for my students to be aware of all the different techniques and the Western techniques that are around the world. They should know what is a Graham technique. They should know what is a Horton technique. They should know what is a Limo technique, they, the difference between them. It's not just contemporary, contemporary. So just for the know-how, I do that. But I uh, sort of encourage them to be themselves to be rooted to our soul and soil and uh, try and create on based on that. Your favorite choreographer? Oh dear, <laughs> there's been a lot. Of course, uh, I, the first person that comes to my mind is Uday Shankar and Omula Shankar. I mean, uh, the kind of choreography that uh, they did, I mean, especially my father in Uday Shankar, during the 20s and 30s and 40s is unbelievable. He was a visionary person and he did, uh, after he created this film called Kalpuna, which we, you know, which was his only film that he directed. And it was a musical, you know, a lot of dance in it. That became like a Bible for all the other directors for, to uh, shoot dance sequences. So, he he is he was a brilliant choreographer, brilliant performer, brilliant showman on the total. So nobody liked him. And of course, uh, I, we didn't get to learn so much from him directly, but of course, from my mother-in-law, Amula Shankar, is where, where I sort of saw and and she was a brilliant, brilliant teacher, brilliant teacher because all good performing, fabulous performing artists are not good teachers. And she was fabulous in both. So we, I was very lucky to be under her tutelage and her mentorship. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm just uh, like 
I mean, right now I'm just thinking about those, like the black and white photographs that's coming and going in front of my eyes, you know, uh, of them. And uh, would love to know that, as you say, that you are really uh, uh, like uh, uh, encouraged by her. And you, I mean, she she was a fantastic teacher. Uh, uh, you uh, have any kind of memory of like that that you can share with my viewers that how, uh, yeah, like, yes. how was the bonding? Yeah. Well, um, whatever little I'm doing today. Whatever little I'm teaching today, whatever little I am choreographing today has all come from her. Mm. So that is the kind of depth she put in all her students. And uh, I'm really grateful to her for that. And she was, she was another outstanding lady because um, she was not only a an outstanding performer. She was a great partner to my father-in-law, Uday Shankar. She was an outstanding painter. She was an outstanding cook. So, you know, I, I cannot stop telling how many... She was a writer. She wrote her first novel when she was in her teens. So, you know, she was a multi-talented woman. And to come in close contact with one such person, at least something or the other rubs off on you, <laughs> you know. And uh, because I got married very young and I came into this family very young, I sort of uh, learned many things from her, from going to the market with her and, you know, how to buy vegetables to how to cook certain you know, dishes which were very much like her own trademark dishes. Uh, everything I've learned from her, you know. So, and the bond was very, very unique. In the beginning, it was, of course, like a teacher, Guru and Shishya. But when I got married, overnight, she started calling me Boma, you know. And so, you know, it, it already brought me very close to her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the bonding was very, very strong. Very, very, uh, you know, what should I say? I think it's a very spiritual bonding. Very sp spiritual bonding. Would love to know about your favorite choreography. Like you have been doing for so many years. And also another thing would love to know that when we see you on stage with your group, the main part that attracts me is how much time of rehearsal, I mean, you guys have done because everyone's hand is going up in one motion. Everything is like everyone's taking a circle in one step. So how that is possible? I mean, one, two, three person, all right, okay. But being in that big stage and with all those beautiful performers, like how long it takes to do to do like all the rehearsals and and come out with that idea. You know, this is a training that we have had in the institution at the Uday Shankar India Culture Center, where uh, we were taught at least when twenty girls would dance, we were taught to think that we were all one. So you bond not only. Uh, through uh, trying to, you know, walk or move together, but also start thinking together. So that is a very different kind of a training that we've, we've had. And I try to pass on that same thing over to our dancers uh, during our performances and rehearsals. And I think rehearsals, you're right, are very important. You cannot, I, I don't, any dance which we have must have done about 10,000 times, still, when we go to perform, we will at least have two to three rehearsals to go on stage. And that is very important because practice makes perfection. And that is, you know, one thing uh, as professionals, you have to have that rehearsal, you have to have that dedication, and you have to give 200% of yourself to, uh, you know, create or, uh, you know, translate 
what you're trying to say through your body language to the audience. And that takes a lot of rehearsal. So that is very important. And another, the thing that you asked about my favorite choreography, I, I always look at my choreography and I feel, it, I think I could have done better. I could have changed this. That keeps on happening. So I just, I think it's still to come. We, we want to know that how much important uh, is acting in dancing? Because I think that that goes hand on hand. So if you can explain that a little bit. Yeah, uh, see, uh, uh, dance and theater are part of one branch, uh, I mean, one bar, uh, tree. It's like the two uh, branches of the same tree. Because in, in, in dance, we call it abhine, where we are only using our face, eyes and everything and body language. Theater, they're not only using the expression, but they're also using it with dialogues. So it's the same thing. Acting and dance go hand in hand. You're right. The only thing that I feel is a little different in dance, we have to reach out to the last audience on the balcony, last row, through our body language and our facial expression. But in theater, they have the license of uh, you know, the dialogues along with the emotion. So that is the only difference. Otherwise, both of them are like two eyes, you know, it's just, uh, you know, and yes, again, I'm telling you, there is a little difference of uh, even acting when you're acting on stage and when you're acting on in film. Film, even if you do a little twitch, it magnifies. So you have to be very, very, very subtle in your expressions. On stage, you, uh, you know, make, you blow up your expressions. You make it big, you stylize it for people to understand what you're saying. But in, uh, during a film, because it's magnified, even if you raise your little eyebrow, you know, people know you're asking a question. You don't have to say anything, it's very subtle. So these things, you know, you, uh, you learn over a period of time as in how you grow, you know, your experience comes. So that is the, they're completely, you know, uh, they complement each other. Want to know about your uh, passion for acting and how that started? Because in, in Bengal, I know that everyone knows that you act as well, and that is also beautiful. So how that uh, actually touched you, I can say that, all right, let's try something different than dancing and let's see that um, how much I like it or love it. So how was that? You won't believe it, but it was uh, actually my husband who pushed me into it because when an offer came for a film to me and I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it because I said, I, I am a dancer. I'm enjoying to dance. I don't need to do films. I'm okay. I love the stage. So then he told me that, you know, why are you saying no? You will learn something new. It's a new media. You know, it's something which, you know, has come to you. It's fallen onto your lap. You didn't go to them. So if you do it, you learn something new. If the film doesn't work, don't do any more. But don't say no for anything which new that is coming your way. So that is how I sort of uh, started uh, some, you know, doing films. And uh, initially, I was absolutely not keen on it at all because I felt I'm not going to be able to do it or I, I don't know what acting is about in films. But it was my first director, you know, Shoruj Day, who actually taught me the nuances of film acting. You know, we did a lot of workshop. That is where I understood that, you know, that subtleness in uh, expression, uh, the delivery of dialogue, the pauses, you know, the, you know, voice modulation, 
all that I learned. So in a way, you know, it was a learning process for me. So that's how films happened to me. What is what is uh, your favorite character that you have you have done, or you think uh, I can do better than this? Like like you just see that no, it is never like that. I always see that oh, I can do better. I can do this part. Maybe what you, I mean, yeah, like no, I for, for films, you always feel you know as the same thing that uh, you know. I think I could have done better once you once you finished and you watch the film, then you said oh. I should have done this. Oh, I should have done that, you know. But uh, yeah, I was very happy to be a protagonist for a film called Hemunte Paki, uh, which went with my age. And uh, it uh, was a beautiful story by Shuchitra Bhattacharya. The film, uh, the uh, book was called Hemunte Paki. I enjoyed doing that film. It talks about a housewife you know, a middle-aged housewife and uh, her sacrifice for her own talent because of the family, you know, for the family. So it was a very interesting uh, film. It got the national award for the best Bengali film uh, that time. So I enjoyed doing that. When you and, I, and I also enjoyed doing namesake. The film names Mira Nairs. Yeah, I enjoyed doing that as well. Tanushriji, thank you so much for being here with us. But as you know, as you all know, that the time is almost running out. But we want to know more from her because she's from such an era where the dance institute started, actually. And, and we want to talk more to her accordingly, her dance, of course, her uh, personal choices, her hobbies. There are so many, much more things. So we want to come back again with her next week. And please stay tuned for the second part of this beautiful conversation. Love you all and see you next Wednesday.